What's up my friends, today we're gonna look on how to build an H bridge that will control the DC motors of our tank. Ok, so we know that we are gonna use a microcontroller. The microcontroller maximum voltage is 5V and any output is current limited so it's obvious that we can connect the DC motors directly to the microcontroller. And not just that, but we want to use two DC motors with a lot of power, one for the right side and the other one for the left side. Those motors use a voltage of 12 volts or higher and up to 4 amperes of current, so we definitely need something in between those two parts. Besides, we want to control the direction of the motor rotation as well. To do that, we will build an H-bridge. An H-bridge is the name of a simple circuit. It's called an H-bridge because of his configuration in the shape of an H. Basically, we want to have three different states of our motors. Spin to the left, spin to the right or no spinning at all. The configuration is very simple, we have 4 transistors in an H shape. We will use bipolar junction transistor or BJT. The top 2 transistors will be PNP because those will be connected directly to the main power, so the current will flow from the emitter to the collector. The bottom ones will be NPN because the positive voltage will be given to the collector and the current will flow from the collector to the emitter which is connected to ground. The 4 transistor will be like 4 gates. By closing these two gates, the current will flow following this path, crossing the motor in one direction and giving a forward spin. Closing the other two gates, the current will follow this path, spinning the motor in the opposite direction. Easy, right? All we need to do is control these four gates with a small circuit and the input of our microcontroller and after that we will be able to use a higher voltage for our motors. These are the schematics of the circuit that we are going to build. We're gonna do two edge bridges, one for each motor. To complete the H bridge we will use these components. So print the schematics that you will find in the link below so you'll have it always in front of you and let's get started. Ok, make sure that you understand the entire schematic. The circuit is very easy so there won't be any problems. We want to carefully distribute all the components on the 5 by 7 cm PCB. We want the inputs and the outputs to be on the both sides of the board, so it would be easier to connect the Arduino pins and the motor's terminals to it. This right here is an example of what we are going to build, and this will be the components distribution. We will solder the two edge bridges at the same time, so be careful not to get lost. If you think it's better to solder them one by one, you could do it. First, we put in place the 4 PNP BD140 transistors in the top position, leaving equal space between them. Then, we solder each pin in place and cut off the access. We do the same for the bottom BD139 transistors. We cut the access and put in place the 4 small transistors just above the BD140 transistors, because in that way it would be easier to make the connections. We solder the pin to the base of each BD140 transistor. Now we put in place and solder all the connectors around the board. Remember to connect the 4 resistors to the bases of the BD140 transistors. Next connect 4 resistors in place between the input of the BC547 transistors and cut the excess wire. This is what we have by now. Make sure that all the connections are ok and that the resistor wires don't touch pins that aren't supposed to touch. Always let a small distance between the two whole components. And now comes the tricky part, we have to make the rest of the connection with small wires. We first connect ground to each emitter of the BD139 transistor with a blue wire. Then we do the same with the main power to the emitter of the BD140 transistor with an orange wire. Next we connect the BC547 transistor to the base of the BD139 using the green wire. We do that for the 4 connections. Next we connect the outputs of each side and we are done. Finally we mark all the inputs and outputs and we are ready to test our product. We will make a small testing code to activate the 4 inputs using an Arduino. You should download the test code in the link below. Ok, so first we connect 12 volts to our module main input. Be careful which is ground and which is power, otherwise you could burn your circuit. After that we connect 4 wires from pin 3, 5, 6 and 9 from the Arduino to our inputs. We load the code and see the results. We first spin the motor 1 to the left then to the right and after one second we do the same for motor 2. 
We can also control speeds using pulse width modulated signals from our Arduino. This is an example of pulse width 15. Now pulse width 100. Now 150 and finally full speed with pulse width 255. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any question, please leave a comment in the comment section below or visit my webpage.